It's always a good day when you have your own driver. But on those days where your driver is not available or you can't be bothered to drive yourself, and you've got a smartphone in your pocket and an autonomous car is handy, do the two fit together? Can a smartphone really control an autonomous car? We're about to find out because Huawei is demonstrating exactly that, a driverless car controlled by an everyday smartphone. And we're gonna find out if it really works. Here we are in a driverless car with a Huawei Mate 10 Pro on the dashboard. And it's the Mate 10 Pro that's going to drive this car. But it's not, Huawei's not going into the driverless car business. Huawei is actually demonstrating the power of the Kirin 970 processor and the neural processing unit, the NPU, that runs alongside it. What that does is control artificial intelligence on the device, not in the cloud. And this is a demonstration of the power of the NPU and how much difference it makes to image recognition, scene recognition, uh, that we take for relatively granted on the camera system. So here we go, the big moment where the Huawei Mate 10 Pro is going to recognize objects in the road. It's a learning phase. We're not going to do anything outside of the, let the phone and the MPU understand what it sees. Ready? I think we are, because we're about to go in a car that's controlled by a phone. So here we go, I'm pressing drive now. Here, oh, we're going and I'm not doing everything because I'm obviously in the passenger seat. A bicycle has been detected, it said. It's now looking for anything else and it has seen an enormous ball that's being taken out of the way and next a decidedly fake dog at which he has seen and now we're going to have a more real world scenario where the Huawei Mate 10 Pro and a camera on the top of this vehicle is going to suddenly recognize objects in the road and react accordingly. So we're going to set that up right this minute. So if you want to pick which drive maneuver you would like it to do if it sees a bicycle. Okay. Turn left, brake or swerve right. Let's have a swerve right okay. for the bicycle. If you see the football, I think Probably we should break. Okay. And then dog. I feel we should break, just for the record, I think we should press break, but because we're in a testing environment, we're going to swerve left. Sorry, dog. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now we'll put it into gear. And if you can tell the phone that it's in gear, press okay. Here we go. We're apparently going to shoot off at about 30 miles an hour in this sequence. Okay, so whenever you're ready, press drive. Ready, Julian? Yep. We're about to be in a car, quite quickly, recognizing objects in front of us. There we go. We're right. That's pretty cool. <laughs> There we go. You can see we've survived. We're outside this amazing car, but it's not the car that we cared about. It's the fact that a smartphone drove us down this pit of track and avoided objects almost instantly. And for a phone to do that, I'm still getting my head around that it was possible. What's exciting is that we've been told that the developers tried other smartphones without that MPU and that processor. And because they don't have that capability, the test wasn't possible. So what Huawei has done is demonstrate the potential of on-device artificial intelligence. Nothing's controlled in the cloud here. It's all done on the phone. And it's genuinely impressive. What we're excited about is what Huawei is going to do with the MPU next on devices that we can buy where this controls the camera and controls other aspects. Obviously, we're, they're not going to make a car like this. 
So what about the future? Well, we a good chance we're gonna find out more in March when Huawei launches its next phone. But for now, we've just driven down here in that car controlled by a smartphone. And that's pretty amazing.